Hello everyone, uh, this is the fourth part in our series of tutorial videos about the EM solver. The point um, of those videos is to focus on a particular kind of application uh, that the EM solver is used for, namely applications which require eddy currents, uh, such as electromagnetic metal forming. In this video, we are going to finish talking about the physics um, related to eddy currents, but also we are going to see how coupling is handled with the other Elastina solvers. In the previous part, we saw that metal forming applications classically consist of a coil and a workpiece. The coil generates a magnetic field and induces current in the workpiece. Current then diffuses through the thickness of the various conductors. And then as a consequence, we have electromagnetic forces and electromagnetic heating. And then we also saw that the EM solver uses a FEM-BEM method in order to solve the interactions between conductors, which means that no air mesh is necessary. The electromagnetic force is called the Lorentz force. It is equal to the curl of the current density vector and the magnetic flux vector. It acts as an external force applied to the solid elements. The electromagnetic heating, on the other hand, is called the Joule heating. It is proportional to the current density squared and then divided by the electric conductivity. It acts as an external heat source term in the heat equation solved. And what you see below uh, there is a summary of the EM equations uh, that are being solved for eddy currents. Uh, basically it's the same as the Maxwell equations, um, but there's only two modifications that I'd like um, you to um, take a look at. The first one is that uh, the divergence of the electric field is considered to be null always and for all conductors. In other words, uh, we can't, we don't solve any electrostatic effect. Okay? Um, the other modification is that the radiation term is neglected which makes sense because um, we are dealing with applications that have relatively short distance ranges um, but this as a consequence means that uh, we can't do any EM wave propagation uh, problem with the eddy current solver no, so no radars, uh, no sonars okay? so it's, it's, just, it's important to keep this in mind we are focusing here on eddy currents next let's talk about the coupling with the other LS Dyna solvers so how does this coupling work exactly? Um, well, it's very simple, and uh, this simplicity is one of the strengths of the EM solver, along with its FEM-BM method, okay, which means that uh, we don't need to mesh the air. Um, the three solvers, electromagnetics, thermal, and solid mechanics, they each run independently, so it means that they all have their own time step, and the coupling between them, um, or at least between EM uh, and uh, solid and thermal, happens automatically. In other words, the Lorentz force uh, that we saw in the, in the previous video and that is calculated by the EM solver uh, is automatically uh, given to the solid mechanics solver uh, and also if the user has defined the thermal problem then same thing, the joule heating term will automatically be transmitted as a source term. There is no keyword, uh, there is nothing that the user needs to do. And in fact, in the previous cases that we saw, uh, coupling was already happening automatically the Lorentz forces were transmitted to the solid mechanics solver. But since, uh, if you remember, we used rigid materials uh, that were fully constrained, so those forces had no effect. Okay? Um, the most important point when dealing with problems that involve coupling is what we call the FEM-BM system recomputation frequency. By default, the matrices of the FEM and BM system um, are computed only once during the initialization phase. But if the conductors deform, then obviously the initial positions used by the FEM system are no longer valid, uh, so you need to recompute this FEM system for the EM solver to give an accurate result. And in a similar fashion, if the conductors uh, move uh, in respect to one another, then it becomes important to recompute the BEM system. Okay. Remember, the BM system is in order to solve the interaction between conductors. So you need to uh, periodically, um, or from time to time, recompute uh, or tell the BM solver okay, where the conductors are in respect to one another. Of course, in an ideal scenario, uh, the FEM BM systems they would be recomputed at every time step, uh, and this would ensure that you get a very accurate result. However, uh, this would prove to be too costly uh, computational, for the com computational times 
um, especially the BM system, which consists uh, of dense matrices, and those take a while to, to be assembled. Um, so it is up to the user to set reasonable values compromising uh, between accuracy and speed. So for example, he will say that he wants the BM matrices recomputed every 10 time steps, or every 20 time steps. Uh, all of this depends uh, on how much the conductors move in respect to one another. Um, so where do you control this? Where, what are the keywords? So um, it's the first time here that we're going to introduce our new keywords since uh, we started those videos. Um, well, the flags are in the keywords that are called EM Solver FEM and EM Solver BEM. Uh, the user here will decide how many iterations uh, the FEM or BEM systems, um, after how many iterations, sorry, the FEM or BEM systems must be recomputed. Um, the other flags uh, of those keywords, I would uh, recommend you to just leave them at default. So just focus uh, on the uh, on this flag there that controls uh, the um, recomputation of the FEM and BM uh, matrices. And then uh, finally, there's another way, uh, another interaction type um, uh, between the EM solvers uh, and especially the thermal solver, and that is by taking into account the changes of the electric conductivity. Uh, due to temperature uh, changes mostly, but also uh, it could also be other mechanical properties. So this is done via the introduction of a, what we call an EM equation of state, an EM EOS. So the EM EOS is defined uh, in the well EM EOS keyword family uh, and associated to an EM material ID. You know, uh, it's what you see below. It's the fourth flag. The most simple type of EOS uh, simply requires the user to specify a load curve uh, which gives how the conductivity should vary function of temperature. You can see here the keyword EM EOS tabulated 1. Uh, however, there are also more complex EOS types that exist, uh, such as EM EOS Meden or EM EOS De Burgess. Um, but I'd like to, uh, to draw your attention on um, the fact that you can also use a defined function in order to define your equation of state. Uh, for this, you'll have to take a look at the EM EOS tabulated to keyword. So this is really powerful uh, because, I mean, if you're familiar with the Dyna defined functions, um, then you know how to use them. But if not, uh, I suggest that you take a look at the definition. Um, it's really powerful tools which uh, basically allow users uh, to, base, to define their own user-defined law. So in this case, the user would type in his own uh, law that controls how the conductivity should behave, function of uh, temperature or other mechanical properties. However, uh, so one last thing is that if you do, that's, that's optional, obviously, and if you do uh, want to take into account how the conductivity will vary, let's say function of temperature, uh, the important thing is that in order for the EM solver to take into account uh, the conductivity changes, it becomes necessary to, again, uh, from time to time, recompute the FEM system. Uh, so if you use this option, don't forget to check that as well. So we are back here with uh, our classic um, EM metal forming problem. Uh, this time I directly ran um, the case as you can find it uh, on the website. So we have this coil here which is made out of a rigid material, uh, but the difference with the previous video is that uh, uh, the workpiece now is no longer constrained and it's made uh, out of a linear plastic material model. Uh, so what happens is that we before we had those Lorentz forces, but they uh, couldn't do anything because the workpiece was constrained. Uh, but now, let's see here. But now you will see that uh, the workpiece deforms and then impacts the die here, which is an insulator, uh, and which is completely ignored uh, by the EM solver. Then we also have in the same input deck, uh, if you look uh, here, we have the ohm heating power. It's the same thing as the joule heating uh, that is being generated. And since uh, if you take a look at the complete input deck, you will see that the thermal problem is also defined. So uh, this also has uh, an impact on temperature. Okay, so what you see here is more heating uh, where the deformations are higher and where the Lorentz forces and the current density uh, is uh, at its highest. So a couple of things that uh, we can take a look uh, at is, well, first of all, of course, there's no air mesh, right? I mean, this is, happens to uh, the interaction between the coil and the workpiece is done by uh, the BM method. Uh, next, uh, we can take a look at the 
Afim BM matrix uh, recomputations, and so you see here that um, the user has decided oh, in this particular example, it's uh, the Afim and BM systems are being recomputed every twenty time steps. Uh, okay, uh, so if with a time step of two to the power minus six uh, and an end time of one to the power minus four, it means that uh, it will be recomputed something like four or five times during the run. Okay. So one, uh, one nice way of, of observing this is if you start uh, using Rogo coils or using uh, the database keywords in order to track some values, uh, especially if you look at the current here. So uh, I think by default, yes, it outputs this EM circuit file, uh, which here you can plot how the uh, current behaves okay, in the coil. Okay, that's from, uh, from our RLC circuit. And you can see here those little jumps here. Here, there's another teeny tiny one here. Uh, well, those are due to the sudden recomputation uh, of the FEM and BM matrices. Okay, the solver has to adapt uh, in one time step. So you see here the effect uh, of the recomputation of your system. And so if those jumps, if you see those jumps and you see that they're very big uh, or even cause your solver to diverge, although that, that, that's fairly rare. But if you see the jumps here being big, then you can assume that uh, the your solution that you had before uh, you did their computation was really starting to get uh, inaccurate. So, uh, you know, I would then recommend if I saw this, then I would run the case again, but uh, with a you know, higher recomputation frequency to see if it uh, if I could get better results. Okay, so there's something to look um, to take a look at. And so, um, other things that we can uh, note is that also yes, uh, the the same input deck. If you take a look here, uh, it also calls uh, for an equation of state, okay, which has been defined here, the, ta the tabulated one, uh, which means that the conductivity of the workpiece will also vary function of time. So uh, I think it's here, it's output as a variable. Uh, where do we have it? There we go, okay. Uh, you see that it starts at 25 and then decreases okay, uh, in, the, in the areas where um, the workpiece gets heated up. Okay, so this is also taken into account in, in, in this example. A um, few things here, uh, there are a few other keywords um, that we haven't talked about yet. Uh, briefly, just very briefly, there is the database uh, circuit to zero dimension here. Uh, this is a keyword uh, that's frequently used when you use an RLC circuit uh, because um, when you set up a RLC problem, you don't know yet uh, the resistance of your uh, coil and its inductance. Uh, so uh, the this keyword there will give you an analytical solution, uh, an estimate uh, basically of of your current uh, shape. And so with that, you can uh, do give uh, estimators for your skin depth and so forth. Okay. Uh, so here, the solver by using you know the the resistance and the inductance value of the coil uh, has given this an analytical result. Uh, for the current, okay, but of course it doesn't consider any mutual, uh, it doesn't consider the interaction between the coil and the workpiece, and it also doesn't uh, consider the diffusion of the current uh, in the coil itself. But then if you compare it to your uh, final current, okay, then you can check the, re the differences, okay, to see that the final shape, um, although it's the same uh, global behavior, you can still see that it, it changes quite a bit. Uh, between um, the analytical solution or initial solution if the coil was alone and with no diffusion uh, and the final uh, solution. And then uh, the other keywords that are also in this uh, example there that's on the website, on the Dyna example on the website, uh, are the star EM boundary keywords. Um, mainly I think, yes, those are, the, and here the EM solver BM mat uh, keywords which we haven't talked about yet. Um, but those will be interesting keywords, those will be for the next part, because uh, as you know, uh, as you know, what we have seen there is that uh, recomputing, recomputing this BM system um, is pretty heavy, okay, so you, uh, you want to, um, about, you know, uh, when you have to, you have to, but you want it to make it as light as possible, so there's a few techniques, a few tricks that you can uh, do in order to optimize your runs, and this is what we are going to see um, in the next video. So if we do a quick summary of what we have seen in this video, uh, basically uh, the solving of the Maxwell equations in the eddy current approximation gives us two things, a mechanical force, which we call the Lorentz force, uh, as well as an electromechanical heating, which we call the Joule heating. And those two terms are passed to the solid mechanics solver and the thermal solver. And all of this happens automatically. 
the user doesn't have to do anything and there's no keyword to define so it's really simple however the two important things to pay attention to is that if the conductors move in respect to one another then it becomes important to regularly recompute the BM matrices okay and on the other hand if the conductors deform okay uh, or the conductivity changes then it becomes important to regularly recompute the FEM matrices and be between the two of them between the two systems FEM and BEM uh, it's reassembling the BM system that takes the most amount of time so uh, what we'll do in the next video uh, we'll talk we'll introduce a few tricks uh, a few tools uh, which, which can assist you in fine-tuning uh, your analysis and where you can maybe save uh, in some cases some uh, computational time. Alright, thank you for your attention and I hope to see you in the next video.